functions may appear complicated in mathematical terms but is much easier when explained using daily life terms. In this video, we are going to learn about functions as in daily life and also solve some problems related to this topic. So let's get started. What are functions? So functions in daily life can be seen as a machine to which we give any input and it gives the output related to that input. And here in this machine, you can see that we have given the input x equals 3 and the machine is giving the output x equals to 9. So what is happening inside the machine? The machine is giving out the square of whatever input is given to it. If instead the input was 5, the answer would be 5 squared, that is 25. So the key point to take away from here is that for every input given to the machine, we get some output. The set of all input values which are given to the function is called domain and the set of output values is called the range. In mathematical terms, a function can be considered as a relation. But a point to note here is that all relations are not functions. There are some specific properties of a function that a relation must follow to become a function. A relation R defined from set A to B is a subset of A cross B. Let us define a relation R from A to B such that R equals x plus 1 for every x in A. So for this relation to be a function, the following conditions must follow. The two sets A and B have to be non-empty sets. For every input X, there is one output Y, also called the image of X. No element of A can have more than one images in B. Let us elaborate more on this point. Suppose there is an element X in the set A and we have two values Y1 and Y2 which correspond to the element x. That means both y1 and y2 are images of the element x in the set A. Then, this will violate the definition of a function. Let's come to the next point. There may be elements of B which are not associated with any element of A. So there can be some images in B which do not have any pre-image in A. Different elements of A may have same image in B. So to elaborate this point more, if I have two values, if I have two values x1 and x2 which belong to set A, then they may have the same image y in the set B. So these two points here are very important to note down. Based on the properties that we have just discussed, there is an exercise for you. You have to decide amongst the three which do you think represents a function. At this point, I would like you to pause the video, reflect on it for a little bit and come back to check your answer. So let's see. In the first one, all the elements of set X have a definite image in set Y and all the images are different so, uh, so this verifies all the properties of a function. Now here in this one the three elements A, B and C of the set X have one image Y. So if we go back and look at the last point distinct elements of A may have same image in B. This is the same case that we see over here. So this also qualifies as a function. Now if we look here, the element B has two images D and E. Similarly, the element C in the set X has two images F and G in the set Y. If we look back to the properties that we have just discussed, no element of A can have more than one images in B is not a function. Let's move on 
and look at the various ways in which we can represent functions. Functions can be represented using mapping or a table, a graph or ordered pairs. There can be more ways in which you can represent functions. Can you think about any of those? If yes, then please leave a comment. Now, there's another way in which we can verify that a graph represents a function or not. If we draw a vertical line on the graph of the function and it joins more than one point on the graph, it means that the function does not qualify the vertical line test. Let's see which of these figures given to us is a function and which is not. So here you see this graph. In this graph, the vertical line is touching on the two points. So this is not a function. And here also we can see that the vertical line is touching two points on the curve. So this is also not a function. So all these graphs in which the vertical lines intersect the function only at one point, those graphs are called as functions. Let's solve some questions related to this topic now. You have to find the domain of the function x squared plus 5x plus 6 divided by x squared minus 8x plus 12. Now for domain, you need to keep in mind that the function never assumes the value not defined. As here we can see we have a polynomial in the denominator. If we put the value of x as any of the zero of this polynomial then this denominator will become zero and the function will be not defined. We don't want that situation to happen as then it won't be a function. So let's find out the roots of this polynomial x squared minus 8x plus 12. We will use the method of middle term expansion. So this will give me x squared minus 6x minus 2x plus 12. Taking x common. 2 common here. I have got two roots of this polynomial as 2 and 6. Now, for input, the given function fx equal to x squared plus 5x plus 6 divided by x squared minus 8x plus 12. This function can take all the inputs except 2 and 6 because if the inputs are 2 and 6 we will get the denominator to be 0 and which will make the function not defined. So here we can say that domain is the set of all real numbers except 2 and 6. So this will be the answer. Let's move on to the next question. Find the domain and range of the real function fx equals square root x minus 5. We are given the function fx equals square root x minus 5. Now what will happen if the value of this square root sign turns out to be negative? If I take x to be 3. What will happen? Let's see. fx will be 3 minus 5. That will give me fx to be negative 2, which is not defined. That means x cannot take any value which is less than 5. So the domain 
will be all the values greater than 5. This can be written as 5 up till infinity. If x equal to 5, then fx will be equal to 0 and it is still valid. So we will take the value of input as 5. The range is the set of all output values. If we have the set of input as 5 to infinity, that means all the positive numbers can be the range of this function. So we will write range is set of all positive integers. Let's move on to the next question. Let f and g be two functions defined on r to r as fx equals x minus 5 and gx equals 3x plus 1. We have to find f plus g, f minus g and f over g. So to find f plus g, we will simply add the two functions. This will give us x minus 5 plus 3x plus 1. This will be 4x minus 4. To find f minus z, we will subtract both the functions. This will give me negative 2x minus 6 and f over gx will be fx over gx. This will give me x minus 5 over 3x plus 1.